Something as simple as the area of the world in which you're flying can have a dramatic effect on your chances of being involved in a CFIT accident. For example, compared with North America, the CFIT accident rate is 33 times higher in the area in which our third accident occurred. On September 4th, 1991, November 204 Charlie, a G2 operated by a U.S. corporation departed Tokyo, Japan for Jakarta with a planned fuel stop in Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. The crew had previous operational experience at the Kota Kinabalu airport, which is located on the northwest coast of Borneo. The en route portion of the flight is believed to have been uneventful. As the aircraft approached Kota Kinabalu, the weather was VFR, with multiple cloud layers from 1,600 feet to 27,000 feet. Visibility at the airport was reported to be greater than 10 kilometers. The instrument approach facilities included an ILS and VOR, but no radar, which is typical of airports in the region. As the aircraft approached its clearance limit, the Kinabalu VOR, the crew repeatedly tried to obtain further clearance on the congested frequency. Ask if we can track outbound on the 258 if he wants to stop for the VOR. The instructions to descend south of the airfield and maintain 9,500 feet are at best ambiguous. I didn't. Uh, I just still didn't understand. Did he say we could go outbound on the VOR, or do we have to hold? Oh, John, Four one three my brother. Well, I gotta know. Four. Requesting contact on follow one seven zero push start one zero minutes. Although the VOR is not located on the field, its close proximity to the airport warrants including it in the clearance, especially in a non-radar environment. It's possible that the controller expected the crew to maintain VMC or for the aircraft to descend southwest over the water. If these were his expectations, he certainly did not clearly communicate them to the pilots. Since the controller and crew spoke different primary languages, the message received by the pilots may have been different than what ATC intended. 
It's believed the aircraft complied with the clearance and departed the Kinabalu VOR on a 180 degree track. As the aircraft progressed south, the controller continued to issue descent clearances. After obtaining limited visual contact with the ground, the crew became concerned with their proximity to the nearby terrain, which rose to 5,000 feet. As the crew turned to intercept the final approach course, they initiated a climbing turn. I'm going to turn to the right. And I'll tell you, I don't like what we've got here. I'm climbing this sucker out of here. Unfortunately, the climb wasn't steep enough to clear the terrain and the aircraft crashed only 100 feet below the top of a ridge located 32 miles south of the VOR. Among other things, accidents such as this exemplify the need to act as soon as possible on your intuition with a maximum performance climb should you become uncertain or have an uneasy feeling about the aircraft's position relative to the terrain. It could mean the difference between life and death. Although an escape maneuver is an effective means to avoid an accident and should be practiced regularly, it certainly would be preferable never to be in a situation where you actually have to use it. Let's take a look at a few things that may have helped this crew avoid the predicament in which they found themselves.